How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be doing a little EP tech tip showing you how to fix a snowblower that might not be throwing snow like it used to. With that being said, let's get right into it. So if you guys will remember my video on why you should lubricate the drive axles on a snowblower using some nickel anti-seas, this is the 825 Craftsman snowblower from that video. And in that video, I had mentioned that we went ahead and replaced belts on this snowblower. It wasn't actually this snowblower that we did that to. It was another one and I got them mixed up a little bit. So because this snowblower still has either the original or just the standard rubber composite belts that I showed you in my uh, previous video, basically it's gonna be a perfect example for today's video. So let's say you've recently purchased a used snowblower such as this and you notice that you know when you first get it, it throws snow great. The snow comes out and uh, throws it pretty far and eventually over time you notice that it just doesn't throw snow as good as it used to when you first got it you may just have to make an idler pulley adjustment so the first thing you're going to want to do is come down to your belt cover here you guys can see right on this cover it says v-belt stretch under normal use which will affect discharge performance and should be periodically adjusted. So today I'm gonna to be instructing you how to make this adjustment and it's very simple. On the majority of belt covers, they're gonna be plastic and they're going to be held on by one or two bolts. You can see here, this one is a 3 8 So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that now. To do that, I'm going to use my Milwaukee cordless ratchet with a 3 8 socket and an extension to get past the tire. And repeat that step on the other side. Now, sometimes these plastic belt covers can be tricky to get off, but a lot of times you can simply pull them straight up on these older Craftsman's and they come right off. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, all of this here is going to be quite familiar to you. We're going to have our drive belt at the back that's always under tension, and then we're going to have our auger belt up at the front here, and that is going to be a loose belt that is engaged only when you get on the auger lever up on your handlebars. So your auger drive lever up on your handlebars here runs down to a cable, and that cable attaches to this lever here using these little Z-bend, what you'll hear me refer to them as a Chinesium piece of metal there. Uh, they break very easily if you have too much tension on this cable, and we're gonna get to that after. But basically this cable runs down to a spring here, and that spring runs to an arm, which travels in back towards your idler lever there. So when you engage that auger lever up on your handlebars, it moves that idler arm and idler pulley into your auger belt, putting tension on it, transferring power from your engine's crankshaft pulley down to the second stage pulley. And when you do engage that lever on your handlebars to engage your auger there, it also releases that brake on your auger's pulley there, which we'll get into momentarily. Now, as you saw on that belt cover, it did mention that these industry standard rubber composite belts will stretch over time, and you will have to make the idler pulley adjustment, which I'll be showing you how to do now. So on the back side of the idler pulley, you are going to notice the idler arm there. It has a slot which will allow for the adjusting of the position of the idler pulley here. So in this case, we haven't changed the belts, they're old belts, and you can see that this idler pulley has been adjusted to its maximum position all the way in. Now, the farther in that you adjust this idler pulley here will give you more tension on the belt and thus a better transfer of power from your engine's pulley to your auger pulley down here. However, the more tension you put on this auger belt is going to increase the amount of friction that this idler pulley here applies to the outside edge of this belt. And the more friction you have, the more heat you're going to have. Now these industry standard rubber composite belts aren't designed to withstand a lot of heat. And you can already see the signs of wear on this belt. We can see some cracking and also a little chunk that's been busted out of that belt there. So again, this belt is going to have to be replaced because once again, we have our idler pulley pushed in all the way. However, I would like to note that you don't want to go ahead and loosen off that idler pulley bolt and slide it all the way in right away and then tighten it up because if your machine doesn't have a belt that has stretched as much as mine you may be putting too much tension on your belt 
with the idler arm still disengaged to the point where if you fire up your snowblower and your crankshaft pulley here starts turning, it may start grabbing your belt and it may move your auger there. And again, you're gonna have to remember that your brake on your pulley down there is still going to be engaged, so you may end up smoking a belt. So I'm gonna show you how to easily check if you have too much tension on your belt. Go to your snowblower's throttle lever and throttle it down. If you have a shutoff switch, go ahead and disconnect that as well. Next up, go ahead and grab a hold of your recoil pull start handle, but don't pull over the engine just yet. You're gonna wanna get yourself into a position where you can see the crankshaft, and then go ahead and turn over the engine just by pulling your pull start handle there. Now what you saw here is the crankshaft pulley rotate without the belt here rotating. Now what that means is that the belt still has enough slack on it to allow that crankshaft pulley to rotate without grabbing the belt. So if we were to go ahead and fire this up, we would not be smoking a belt even though I've maxed out the adjustment on my idler pulley here. And doing that quick check will just prevent you from smoking a brand new belt if you're going ahead and making this adjustment for the first time after you've replaced a belt, or it'll prevent you from smoking an older belt that still has a little bit of life left in it. So in the case of this snowblower, it's an old belt that is stretched and the idler pulley was adjusted all the way in. But if you're noticing that your snowblower just isn't throwing snow like it used to, and you come down to the idler pulley here, and you see that it's on the outside of that slot there, then it's gonna be quite simple to make that adjustment. On this particular snowblower, it has a 9 16 bolt and nut on it, so you go ahead and loosen that off using a wrench, and then that will allow you to make your adjustment here. Now, a lot of times, you're not gonna have to go all the way in. Sometimes, you can just get away with going in just a little bit. So go ahead and snug up that bolt and that nut there, and then, like I said, go ahead and pull over your recoil there with the idler in the disengaged position to make sure that the pulley here spins without grabbing the belt. And you might have to play around with it to get your proper amount of tension, but you will find that sweet spot. Now using a quick clamp here, I've gone ahead and engaged my auger lever up on the handlebars here. And if we go ahead and pull over the recoil pull cord there, you guys can see that the crankshaft pulley is turning as is the auger belt. And at this point, we can now go ahead and check for the amount of slack or tension on this belt while the idler arm here is in the engaged position. And you guys can see that it doesn't move that much. So there is a maximum amount of tension on that belt, which is again going to give us a good transfer of power. And obviously you saw that this belt is showing the signs of wear and needs to be replaced. However, for a lot of you that may be on a budget, you may want to run a belt until that belt lets go. So you have to keep in mind that when you do add more tension to the belt, it probably is going to fail sooner, especially if it's all dried and cracked like this belt is here. So you may end up running into a belt that will end up throwing snow a little bit better, but it won't last as long. In that case, you can go ahead and replace it. And I would highly suggest at that point running a Kevlar belt if you can on your application. And one more little tip that I can share with you. In order to keep your belts lasting longer, you want to go ahead and look at the alignment of your idler pulley compared to the position of your belt. And you want to make sure that the belt is centered up in that pulley. Sometimes these idler arms can bend and your pulley can get into a position like that where it's kind of off center. Now what that'll do is it could end up chafing the sides of your belt. So just a quick little tip that I can share with you. Get yourself a pair of channel lock pliers and if you do have an idler arm that is slightly bent you can go ahead and just grab the idler arm like this and then go ahead and bend it and you know make any little minor adjustments that you may need to get that idler pulley into a position where it's lined up perfectly. Doing that will prevent any belt chafing and will extend the life of your belt. And just before we wrap things up, I did want to come back quickly to the auger cable and spring here. So again, you want to be making the adjustment at the source for your auger belt here, which is going to be your idler pulley if your idler arm has this slot. Now, a lot of newer snowblowers, they don't have that adjustability at the idler pulley. They simply have a hole in the idler arm here and your idler pulley can only go into one position. So if your snowblower does not have an idler pulley that has that adjustment, 
there's not a whole lot you can do. You're either going to have to go ahead and replace your belt or you're going to make an adjustment at the auger cable here. But again, going back to this auger cable here, if you do make the adjustment to the point where this cable has too much tension on it in the disengaged position, you could be lifting that brake that I showed you on the idler arm there off of the pulley when it's disengaged, and that's not good. You could also end up snapping a cable or snapping the little Chinesium Z-Bends that hook up to the handle lever there. So again, that's why you always want to make that cable adjustment last. And on most of these snow blowers, all you have to do is disconnect the cable. You're going to lift this spring up and then there's going to be a threaded rod with a nut on it. And you can go ahead and move that nut farther up the threaded rod, which will in turn shorten this cable, giving you more tension. But after you've made those adjustments, go ahead and engage your auger lever here. And you're feeling for a nice amount of tension without it being to the point where you feel like something could break. And making an adjustment to that idler pulley is literally as simple as that. So that's going to be it for today's video. Like I said, if you guys are regular viewers to my channel here, this is all going to be quite familiar to you. So this video is going to be geared towards someone who's new to snowblowers, maybe picked up a used one not too long ago and just started noticing that it's not throwing snow like it used to. Go ahead and make that quick idler pulley adjustment and you'll be back throwing snow like you were before. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel up for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.